Monika Sturm vom Siemens, Christian Sander äh, vom NDW, äh, Nick Sherman vom, äh, vom Bosch. Äh, could you explain a little bit what has been the difficulties in setting up the use case just right now, up to now, what we have seen? What have been the major challenges of setting it up? Yeah, first of all, <coughs> let me state that we trust in our developers, so because you said that it was uh, not clear that it will work, um, so I, I was quite um, um, sure. So, um, and it was only a small, um, small problem we had to solve. Typically the weakest part of the chain <laughs> defines the stability of a chain. <laughs> yeah, that's probably right. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, let me start. I think um, um, the, the, you, you were talking about challenges. I think mm. um, the other way around is interesting that um, um, building such a, a use case was relatively easy because um, uh, let's assume we had a scenario where we would uh, have to persuade um, the, the Siemens and EMBW guys that they should connect to a Bosch um, backend and then the discussions would have been far more difficult and in our case we just roughly, uh, so to speak, decided on what kind of uh, DLT system we want mm -hmm. to run this use case on, and then we were uh, able to code. Mm -hmm. Could maybe also both com companies also reflect a bit? Well, I think it was a, a really good consolation because all of us were working on DLT scenarios. So. Uh, uh, Every corporate was searching for uh, another corporate working on a similar scenario to connect uh, um, over the uh, over more corporates and, and have a use case not in their own corporate but but in a larger scale. So um, for us, it was uh, a really good experience working together, discussing discussing uh, in an open way uh, the solutions and the technologies we can use, the discussions on which protocol to use. I think it also was easy because we are actually spe speaking about a technical proof of concept. Um, mm. I think it's getting more interesting to call it <laughs> like that um, in, the, in the further steps. So um, mm -hmm. in the view on, on the solution we showed as a technical proof of concept, uh, a successful proof of concept, um, I can say it was a really good work together. Uh, and I hope um, there are several other steps to learn more about using DLT scenarios. Mm -hmm. Monica? I would like to answer with the word of Michael Spitz. It was the fun part. It was the proof of concept. I think we had great people knowing how to work with DLT technology. I think that the challenges will come now. It's the scaling, it's really to making it, uh, to, to make a product out of it. Yeah? I think this is where I believe we have to learn a lot. And not only the technical part, but I also believe that from a way how we work together, how we define IPR rights and all this stuff, um, these will be topics to be, we have to solve between um, uh, our enterprises. And I think um, more the challenges will come. We have had our fun part. And um, yeah, this is what we have to manage now. Well, let's focus a little bit on the next steps because the crucial thing is really the how could we commercialize it. And uh, uh, absolutely, I'm, it's, for me, it was always there technology is there, we just need to commercialize it. And uh, I think that's, all, that's been also the case right now here. What is actually, what would be the most critical path? Maybe could we come up from each perspective? Uh, um, what would be the cri most critical path if we would like to roll out such a solution? So in BW, I could imagine you think, anyway, this is our business because we have the charging stations, uh, Siemens. I, mean, I think you all would come up a little bit with that perspective. What, what, what is the most critical part in commercializing it? Well, uh, first of all, for us, it's a proof of technical, uh, uh, realizing it's te te technical. Um, mm -hmm. So in the next step, uh, the question is uh, where the, where's the value proposition, uh, realizing scenarios like this on a decentralized platform. 
in comparison to uh, solutions we already have in the market right now. Mm. So, uh, of, of course, I tell you, uh, we are really go good on the way uh, building the loading infrastructure as in BW. We, we have charging solutions uh, which are comfortable because we are using an existing roaming network. So, you could say, you know, yes, it's everything is there. Um, so, the next Siemens step is... Siemens fair, you have yeah, charging solutions. Yeah, everyone, so, yeah. we could split again. But, uh, so, so uh, the next step is uh, to challenge it mm. uh, and to, to find an answer on the question, well, is there a value proposition uh, in this alternative? Um, uh, uh, remembering all the discussions we, we heard today, um, and uh, I'm, I'm honest, I can't give you an answer on that right now. Mm. I would like to answer the question following. You put on your slide slow, if I remember correctly. And I think this slow is correct and it shows that we have to work on it, we have to understand and we have to change. We have to change the business models. It will be a different type of business and we have the traditional business and we have now to rethink how new business model can look like. And I think this is also at least from Siemens side why we are here and talking to you <laughs> uh, to find out what are the new business models. Um, we have some ideas, we developed already some ideas. There are a couple of ways how we could make money and I just uh, use the words uh, which I learned here from your university like curator, complementer and so on. But we have to verify it and we have to understand it and that's exactly where, where we are working. Mm -hmm. Technology, the, the use case we have done in the past, will it be the same in the future? I don't think so. Nick from Bosch, business model is how to create value and capture value. What would be your answer to that? Um, I have a good chance now to, to give an unorthodox answer since our boss stepped out for a second. Um, so <laughs> I, I use that time to appear and I'm just joking. Um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that um, our main challenge would be to, um, to deal with a situation that after a proof of concept, um, um, the next step would do um, um, something that has a business impact. Mm -hmm. And in all our organizations, I think there's still, let me be a bit provocative, the residual business model mm -hmm. of owning a platform. And, and there are a lot of um, Excel spreadsheets out there in the organizations um, that show that if you own that platform, you have huge uh, amounts of, of turnover and profit and so forth. And from my perspective, the business model is um, super simple. Um, we just do what we um, are good at as a company, as Bosch at least, building good products with good software on it. And we don't have such a good track record on, um, um, on building huge platforms. But that is uh, exactly, I would refer again to uh, 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 Mr. Bolle's input in the morning. Everybody wants to have its own platform. Nobody wants to contribute to another platform. That's why, as a result, we all have actually small platforms. If you think in terms of a ecosystem perspective, and that is what we actually try with building up that prototype right now, having an ecosystem where we have a joint value proposition, which has to be superior in terms of value creation and value capturing for each of you, um, for each player, actually, then if you would do it uh, alone. And the question is, it has to simultaneously, for everybody of you, you have to have a better solution. And that is the problem uh, for everybody at the same time, create value and capture value in, at a better stage uh, than if, if, you, if you would do it alone. Yeah, but, uh, but uh, ju just to answer on that directly, I think um, if you look from, from an economic perspective on a situation where the platform monopoly is owned by a single company, this company has a sort of a monopoly and can um, extract rents from that. Mm -hmm. And you can show that in such a case, the social welfare of the whole system is lower in a monopolistic situation than it uh, would have been in a, in a more um, distributed. But that's a welfare perspective. I totally understand the welfare perspective in terms of uh, uh, distributing consumer rents and producer rents. And you think in terms of the whole welfare is actually would be higher. But as a monopolistic player, I wouldn't, I wouldn't care about it. If I'm Amazon, I would just say, it's great, let's, let's maximize and let's uh, capture value. I mean, if I would be Uber, that's right. The question, I, why I think these are typical strong players, 
uh, strong players of Germany, but not in a quasi monopolistic situation as an Amazon or as a Google. Um, there might be a better situation if we build actually a joint value proposition along the ecosystem. And this is just at the moment the fragile state where the proof of concept is there and we have actually now to go on to the next step. So the next step would be not, my answer would be not the welfare because the comp companies normally don't think like that. I appreciate if, it, if you do that so, but uh, typically it, it's about how to create value and how to capture actually more value for us as our company because we have three players right now, three corporates. Um, how could you actually increase that? And the proposition would be uh, together you get a higher uh, value overall than if you would do it in a single way. But that, if that's not true, the whole thing I think there are have a future. Two, two ways to look at it. I personally believe we are currently in the age of monopolies and the monopolist owns everything and gets everything. I think there's uh, currently a, um, a movement um, not to support this type of um, business. And we see that how dependent we are on some monopolists. So do we like to have this in the future? I again put a question mark. I think we want to change it. And what I think we have learned in the, in, over the last time that um, if we want to scale, we also have to provide value to others. If we only take the value and don't give value to others, we will not scale. Mm. So I think uh, in working together, we sh should all create a value. Uh, and I believe if we don't do it, others will do it. So um, we, we have to change also technology, thinking of autonomous systems. Uh, the, current system, the current technology, how we do it today, will be different in the future. So we have to change technology anyway. So by changing technology, the business model will change. And this is also how we will work together because the domains will grow much closer together. And we, will, we can only make it if we work together. And for each party should be a value because then we scale. If only one owns it, we will not scale. Yeah. And, and MBB thinks regionally and you might be able to scale it alone regionally. Well, it's uh, someone other to give an answer on our strategy. <laughs> strategy. Um, uh, well, I think that's a point. There are several industries which have several benefits out of uh, the scenario of a decentralized platform. So it's interesting uh, to go the further step to, uh, to learn about that. And uh, maybe it's a kind of, of game, game theory. Um, you have... Uh, uh, many local optimums and, and one global or, or welfare uh, optimum. Um, and the question is, uh, is there a way to get there? Mm. And um, th that's why I meant, I, uh, actually, while, while we are standing here, I'm not able to give an answer on that. But I'm really curious to uh, discuss about that and to learn more if there is a way uh, to, to uh, reach this target. Mm -hmm. How soon would we have to involve the legal part of uh, uh, every company? That is typically the start, uh, and I remember <laughs> at least from two companies <laughs> that's getting actually challenging. NBW, I think we had also with Oliver Deutschle in the Innovation Factory when we had projects together. Uh, then it starts sometimes to get a bit more complicated. You talked about I IP rights. Uh, I think IP rights in that part won't be the most difficult part, but the distribution um, of the added value, how would there be what would be a solution, what you could think of? So we already started to involve our legals, so <laughs> we now uh, have it set up. So I think this is the next step to, to uh, show you. Um, and I didn't get the second question, what you want. Yeah, how, how do you need, what, what are the difficult problems right now in how to distribute the cake? To put it in other words, you know there are there are different the things. So th there are the legal topics. This is not distributing the cake. Distributing the cake is done with 
in the businesses. Yeah. So I think, uh, so if you talk about the legal, yes, we have to manage certain legal aspects, but I believe if there is the, the wish, we can make it. This is my experience over the last years. Mm. Um, how we define the, the business impact, we have already worked together on a kind of first draft of a business plan mm. where we said, how could it look like? And there are different um, ways of generating um, business. And I think we have to, to try it. As, as you said, we are in the way of doing it. Mm. We have done our first drafts. L let's see how it will work out. And I think it's it will still be updated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I, I'd love to. I, I would love to to bash the, the lawyers now and say it's it's their fault that we are not quicker, but it's not so easy. Um, as as I, th I said, I think the the, the 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 biggest problem is comes from from this this um, um, this overlay of of two different approaches on this platform economy economy. Mm -hmm. So they are still within the company. Well, still in, in parentheses. Um, the idea of building proprietary platforms, yes. and and the next step we would do together would definitely have some in business impact. And now we are facing the discussion um, within at least Bosch. Um, what, what shall we do? Shall we um, continue? And then we have um, this business impact. Do we really want this? Um, how does this relate to our other uh, platform strategies? I think this is the discussion mm. that takes place and which takes time. Mm. Yeah, it's also uh, lo looking on this use case, also other use cases we are working on. I remember the picture uh, you showed, Mr. Boller, uh, on, on the arch architecture scheme, um, talking about an open transaction platform or, or standard uh, uh, on which uh, many corporates are uh, tell uh, we will use it. It's, it's uh, something new because uh, we know the scenario um, designing our own platform, building a platform business model. Um, if I'm thinking about building an open transaction platform and going in competition with ser services on this open platform, it's, an, it's a new way of thinking. Mm. And uh, so that's the interesting question, and that's a question which, which will surely become interesting in discussing it with our legal departments. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to open up. Uh, um, is there any question from from the audience to the to the three colleagues who did a marvelous job in really in a short time to to develop that prototype? Yes, over there. Could we have a mic? Just uh, from the legal point of view, have you already thought about the data privacy issues in, in your pilot? Because we had really, really big troubles in energy blockchain issues. How, how could we deal with, with uh, privacy issues? Yeah, well, I think um, this is a very good point. Um, um, one way, uh, th this architecture we've been um, showing um, relies very heavily, for example, on, on this uh, self sovereign identity schemes um, where you have a very limited amount of information on the DLT system. Mm. Um, and uh, I think that's, that's definitely, that has two, two um, um, good um, assets. The one is that um, you don't need to write too many um, um, transactions on such a system. And the second one is that you can uh, deal better with privacy issues. But you're right, I think the, the balance between opening up a system um, that people can do analytics on it and still comply to privacy, that will be um, a very, very um, difficult and, and balancing activity we have to face. Mm -hmm. yeah. Martin Bader. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, this morning we heard that um, at least um, in the banking, uh, people first like to work and then hand over the cornerstones to the legal department. So how, how did you do this? As you said already, you're passing on the two business cases to, uh, to the legal departments, especially with regard to IP. What do you hand on to your legal department? What should they do for you? <laughs> If this is an appropriate question here in the public, of course. Um, you know,
know, when we want to continue in working in, in such a, a cooperation uh, way, we also have to define the governance, how we work together, and that's not only IP, uh, and exactly how uh, such a kind of uh, cooperation could look like. This is what we are currently discussing with our legals, how that uh, should look like. Um, at least I'm aware from Siemens' side, we have a lot of um, already um, designed paragraphs, <laughs> how it uh, will look like. Uh, and I think this is exactly the stage where we are now, where we have to start the discussion and adapt it to the needs we now see coming up in the future. This is how we do it. Well, uh, I'm with you. Uh, one of the biggest questions is, um, in the next steps, uh, after showing that it's possible to realize uh, cases like we saw outside by, by programming smart contracts on a test chain, um, is uh, if, if you think about how would it be if uh, a case like that runs on a productive chain? Who owns this chain? Where are the nodes? Uh, where, how is the governance designed uh, to, to run the nodes? Who decides about uh, developing and release management of the protocol of the nodes? Uh, mm -hmm. Who decides how to develop and uh, what should be the releases of the smart contracts which are running on the, on the uh, platform? So, that are the questions which are beginning to getting interesting because there you need uh, answers how it's organized and not only answers how it's technically so solved. That is a really great issue because it will lead later on to uh, Kilian Schmück's uh, research input because he's just doing his PhD exactly on that issue. What is the governance and what is the how to design actually an incentive system now? Any last question before I would like to hand over? Yes, Jens, Katz. Uh, um, just one question. In the whole process, have you ever thought about whether alternative technologies would have been also possible to use instead of DLTs? <laughs> sure, we are, um, <clears throat> We are, at least here from, from the Siemens point of view, we want to solve the issues of a use case. Um, for certain topics, we will need a DLT layer. Maybe I call it a, a white label layer or whatever. Sure, we are, you have solutions, for example, talking about identities. We are currently using PKIs. Maybe that could be also a solution. So I would not say that I'm here for, it has to be DLT but there are many uh, areas in the use cases where it's easier and makes more sense to solve it with the DLT. So I think that would be at least uh, my approach. So uh, my standard answer to this question is <laughs> every first use case could be better solved with an existing technology. So also I think this use case is already solved by the existing Technologies, But if you're looking into the future, one, two, mm -hmm. three steps into the future, yes. question is, what do we need in, in the future? And this is the reason why we at NBW are dealing with uh, technologies like DLTs uh, to learn about using them and to find out if they help us solving problems of the future. Yes, in a decentralized and also to how to scale up maybe not just within the three companies, but also to other consortia uh, who could adapt to that and, uh, and who could offer actually uh, additional services. And uh, that's why I think this could be just a core start and how to, can we further uh, expand actually also the, the players in the ecosystem. Um, and th that's why uh, a neutral layer like DLT could help actually. Yeah, but I would, would add, um, I, I think we, we briefly touched this issue already. Um, and the DLT, from, from my point of view, is only the operations uh, yeah. system. So it, it's good if it's decentralized so that there's no, no dictatorship in there. But uh, we obviously need to have a, a um, very good and very balanced governance structure as well. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, we wouldn't be able to onboard new partners in a, in a socially acceptable way. Mm -hmm. 
Thanks. That is precisely the point where I would like to hand over. But first, thanks very much to three of you. And thanks very much to the team involved. Uh, thanks very much.